Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today, we are looking at an all new version of the slightly refreshed 2022 Subaru Forester. This is the wilderness. So we're gonna have a good look at it inside now. We're gonna take it driving out here in the wilderness, and then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. For 2022, Subaru gave the Forester a bit of a refresh, and that includes a few new facial features, new headlights, new grills, new bumpers front and rear, and new wheel designs, and of course a couple of new colors for this year. But what we're really talking about here is this new trim grade, the Subaru Wilderness, a more off-roady, adventure-oriented trim grade. And so you get a lot of styling and you get a lot of capability ads. As tested, we're at $36,000 and some change. And this does have a few standalone options as well as a package. So let's talk about what this trim grade offers. First of all, this has a lot of unique touches that makes this trim grade very visually different from the rest of the Forester lineup. Starting right up front, it has a unique grill between its LED headlights. It's got a unique front bumper that's got a lot more black plastic cladding and down on the bottom of that, a large metallic looking skid plate element. Now I'll point out that's not an actual skid plate. That is a design element. This does, however, have underneath that an aluminum bash plate underneath the engine, which is a standalone option that is optioned on this vehicle. Coming around the side, you can see larger and more detailed fender arch moldings, both front and rear. And the wheels on this one, black 17 inch off-road style wheels. And look at the tires, white letter tires are sort of coming back into style. These are Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires, Subaru Wilderness badge on the door. And the mirrors on this are actually an upgraded mirror with the turn signal indicators in them. On the hood, you can see this has a flat black decal that sort of has a blackout treatment and gives this thing a little bit more of a butch appearance. And the copper accents all the way around on the sides, on the badging, and so forth. As you see me standing next to this, you can actually see how tall this vehicle actually is. The greenhouse on the Forester is really one of the defining factors of its design. We got to talk about the roof rack. They've redesigned it for 2022. It can now hold more weight. And that goes to the popularity of rooftop tents and it can now hold 200 pounds and when you're stopped 800 pounds so you can put that 200 pound tent up there now and you can put a lot of people in gear in it when you're stopped and camping and that really does show where the market's going for overlanding and things like that the rear hatch on this is a power opening hatch nice feature looking at the back of the rear hatch a few unique things for the wilderness the badge of course unique trim across the back this does have led taillights and looking at the rear bumper that is a unique rear fascia treatment for the wilderness okay my friends let's take a drive we're going to start out here on the trail and see how this thing drives in the wilderness now the big thing that this thing gets over the standard Forester is a heavy duty suspension along with these off-road wheels and tires. It has an extra half inch of ground clearance now at 9.2 inches, which is pretty good. And that gives you the confidence to go out here a little bit further on trails that may not be quite as manicured and not be so afraid of bottoming out or scraping up your vehicle as much. This also has an extended array of the electronic drive modes. This has X mode and a few extra features that go along with that for the wilderness that give this thing some extra traction capabilities for locking the all wheel drive system and really helping you out in slippery situations, rock, sand, snow, and so forth. What I'm noticing out here is that this has a good nimble feel. The steering is very light, which I like. The ride is a bit stiff for something that's considered to be off-road. It does sort of beat you around just a little bit. I am getting just a little bit of noise and creaking in the structure as it goes over bumps and rocks. The suspension itself is very solid. I'm not feeling anything less than uh, a tight suspension and steering here, but when it comes to the actual feeling of this structure, it does, it does feel like it's not quite as tight as the rest of the vehicle. Now, if you're wondering where we're at here, this is a beautiful place. And that really sort of gets to the point of being in a vehicle like this in the first place is uh, being able to get out here on the open road and really enjoy a place that you don't get to see if you live in a town. And where we're at actually here is the uh, 
Peralta Trail area of the Tonto National Forest. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. It's nice to be out here today. Now we're on the Desert Washboard Road, which is actually a place I love to test vehicles like this because even though it's not an off-road trail per se, this washboard surface really tests how well put together this vehicle is. Does it rattle and shake and squeak? And yes, this does. As do most Subarus that I bring out here. The suspension, I'm not feeling it in the steering or the suspension, that's pretty solid as I said out there on the trail. But when you drive it over this rib surface, I get vibration in the dash, I get vibration in all the trims in here, the doors, I can see them vibrating. It just feels a little bit on the junky side, if I'm honest. So it doesn't feel quite as buttoned down. Going around these curves and corners on this gravel surface, I will say that the stability control has a nice tune to it. You can throw it into a corner and you can actually feel this thing arrest the slide. It does a pretty good job in that way. It'll, for the most part, keep you out of trouble. On the pavement, this actually has a decent ride. And one of the benefits of having this off-road suspension is that it tends to do a little bit better over speed bumps, potholes, railroad tracks, things that you will find in the city than the standard Forester models because it's a little bit more of a heavy duty suspension. And you will notice the extra ride height when you throw it into a corner, both around town and on a curvy road. One of the nice things is though, is that this does have a pretty quiet ride. The 70 mile an hour cruise test that I do with the decibel meter, this measures out at 59.9 decibels, which is about middle of the road for most vehicles. And that's actually something that surprised me given the fact that this interior doesn't have a lot of cloth that typically absorbs sound. This has a lot of vinyl and plastic, uh, and yet uh, the sound level is still pretty reasonable. And so this chassis overall gets four out of five stars. Now let's talk about powertrain for a moment. And the question I always like to ask, is how does it go? Woo! Uh, and 60. Kind of drones on there a little bit. So what this is, is a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed boxer engine, Subaru tradition, has 182 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque and as you probably noticed, it comes with a continuously variable transmission, a CVT. And this does have some step shifting that it can do to give you simulated shifts. Uh, it says on the specs, it, it's an eight speed simulated transmission. Although it's really hard to quantify that because it's really random the way it gives you these fake shift feeling kind of things that it does. It does have paddle shifters here so that you can play with it and you know kind of give yourself the impression that you've got a more traditional transmission even though it isn't. It does have an auto start stop system, not my favorite thing, and this one is very slow to react. This one is very aggressive. It shuts this engine off a lot more than most cars and when it does start up this engine just really shudders to a start, it shudders to a stop. It really lacks refinement in its system, so um, not winning any points there. When it comes to fuel efficiency, this is rated at 25 city, 28 highway, and 26 MPG combined. It is a little bit less than the rest of the Forester line when you step up to the wilderness. Uh, you do lose some MPG with the off-road tires, wheels, and the extra ride height. Something to keep in mind. The power level I find to be adequate. One thing of note is that this can tow 3,000 pounds, which is up from last year. A nice improvement there. When it comes to putting a rating on this powertrain, my key takeaways are the fact that it's a little bit noisy, it lacks refinement, especially when that auto start-stop system is kicking in and out. Now, yes, you can turn it off, but you have to turn it off every time you get in the car. It always defaults to on. Uh, the other thing is this continuously variable transmission, even though it does have these cute little step shifts in it occasionally, um, it's still a CVT. So this powertrain gets three and a half out of five stars. The interior of the wilderness version of the Forester has a lot of unique touches and features, which I think are actually very cool. First of all, as we look around, this is a traditional Subaru interior. In fact, 
it's become pretty unique because it's a bit of a throwback to the 90s in its overall design. Just look at the dash. It looks right out of 20 years ago, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of the design features that come with the Wilderness are things like the copper stitching and the copper accents that you see throughout the interior on the steering wheel, the shift knob, and down on the center console with the drive knob. There's also Wilderness logos, quite a few different places in sort of a sports gear kind of way, a little tag. And on these seats, these are what they call StarTex. I call it vinyl. And it's actually a very nice material for vinyl. It's got a nice very soft sort of uh, almost sort of a wetsuit kind of feel i like it and it doesn't have that stickiness that vinyl tends to have on the headrest subaru wilderness logos looking down at the floor this has a really nice set of all-weather tray style floor liners front and rear with the subaru wilderness logo and as you can see they look a little bit lived in because we were just out in the wilderness with the vehicle there's some realism for you I do find these seats very comfortable. They are power operated for the driver, manually for the passenger. I have been comfortable all week long in these seats and they do have heaters down on the center console. There's some buttons down there and they're the old style rocker switches that stay on when you turn them on. If you get back in the car later, you don't have to return your seats on again, but you do have to remember to turn them off. The steering wheel does have these beautiful copper accents and plenty of controls, both for the audio and infotainment system. The instrument cluster as well as the paddle shifters for the continuously variable transmission the instrument cluster pretty traditional setup two dials with a very small digital screen in the center that you can customize to some degree looking at the center stack eight inch center screen and a bit of a retro throwback another screen up at the top of the dash way up there certainly not a touch screen but it has readouts for your fuel economy and a clock it, it's just 90s not a bad thing, but there it is. The center console is pretty straightforward in its design. HVAC controls in the center. There's a cubby down at the bottom that has all the ports you need for auxiliary, USB, as well as the 12 volt port. For my phone though, I do find it kind of awkward and small. It's not really a great place to put your phone. And in that way, there's not very many other convenient places to put your phone in here without just laying it on a seat or something like that. In the center is a traditional gear shift lever. I love that. Behind it, the drive mode selector and a number of other switches, including the power parking brake cup holders behind that. And they're down low so that you can put some tall gas station cups in there without really being in your way. Center console storage, exactly about a square tissue box size and maybe just a little extra room. And there's another 12 volt port in there as well. Looking up, this has a few things that set it apart. This has a large moonroof in it. That is a sunroof, a one piece that flips open as well as slides. And while it's not a full panoramic roof, it does reach into the back just a little bit. There's an upper console with switches for that as well as the SOS and emergency switches. And you'll note this also has a black headliner, which is unique to the wilderness interior. Rear seat passengers are going to have plenty of space to move around and get comfortable. As you can see, these seats are set from my height about 5'9 with my boots on and I've got lots of legroom out ahead of me and the headroom back here, even with this moonroof is pretty good. I do like the fact that that adds a lot of light back here and makes it feel a little bit more airy given the fact that we have a dark colored interior. This seat, um, about a medium height. It's not low. It's not high. Uh, but it does feel just about right and these seats have while they are pretty firm sort of a nice cushiness with this material When it comes to amenities, there are vents back here for your rear seat passengers and two 2.1 USB charging ports Matte pockets on the back of the seats. There's actually sort of a double layer matte pocket scenario here Which is pretty slick. This does seat three across and as you'd expect the seat does fold down in a 60 40 split for a flat load floor. In the back, there's some really nice buttons that allow you to press one touch and down they go. I always love that in an SUV. Looking at the back, you can see this also has a nice big all-weather mat back there that comes along with the floor mats up front. And when you look underneath that, there's a spare tire. Always a great thing in an SUV, but it's not just a spare tire. That is a full-size spare tire with a full-size alloy wheel that matches the ones outside. That is a major bonus back there. 
When it comes to rating this interior, the material quality for the most part is pretty good, but as we noticed out on the road, there is a lot of noise and rattling and shaking going on, especially when you start taking this thing out in the wilderness. It just isn't all buttoned to the structure as well as I'd like, but the design, uh, while retro, very appealing to the eye, and I love these accents in here, and the comfort, very good. This interior gets four and a half out of five stars. The audio and human interface in this is something that we've seen in other Subaru vehicles. This is the top of the line in this case with the Harman Kardon audio. It's an 8-inch touchscreen. Uh, first thing I noticed right away is this high gloss finish on it, which makes the visibility a bit of a challenge, especially with the sunroof open or whenever you have light shining on it. You have to sort of look between the glare to get to what's on your menus. The menus themselves, the graphics are very nice. It's very appealing to the eye. I will share that one thing it does that I don't like very much is the fact that it always goes to a home screen every time you start the car. And we've talked about that in other vehicles that I've tested. For me, this is a radio. When I get in the car, I want to see my radio stations. I want to see whatever it is where I had it when I got out of the car before. If I had it on my station presets, if I had it on a nav map, whatever, I want it to be there when I come back. I don't want to have to constantly tell it where I want to be every time I get in the car. I find that very annoying. Uh, but once you get in there and start playing with those menus, everything's pretty well laid out. It's smart, it's intuitive, and there's a lot of features here. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, although it's not wireless at this point. It does, of course, have AM, FM, Sirius XM, and a feature I really didn't expect to find here in today's modern era, a CD player. Yeah, a CD player, so you can sort of go old school here if you want. The cameras on this work very well. It has a front camera, 180 degrees, which comes in handy off-road, and the backup camera itself uh, does have a nice turn with your steering wheel feature that helps guide you back. It does not, however, have a 360-degree view. My big takeaways are the fact that it does have low visibility because of this really high gloss screen and it's not that big. Some of the competitors offer bigger screens now and the way the menus work, every time it goes back to a home screen, I find that pretty annoying if I'm honest. This system gets four out of five stars. Now is the time when I like to talk about value. How does it stack up? Now, as tested, we're at $36,000 and some change right in the middle of the Subaru Forester lineup. You can get a lot less expensive models. You can step up and go higher. So they place this new off-road sort of camping um, adventure version right in the middle. And that's pretty common. A lot of the competing crossover SUVs, we're starting to see this new trim grade in um, the outdoorsy version. They're placing that in the middle. So you don't have to spend all the way up to the top to get the goods, the extra capability, the extra gear, that kind of thing. So I like that. Now, when we look at things like quality and warranty, now the quality, not the best in the world, not bad either. Just a lot of rattles and squeaks when we were out driving around off-road and also the interior, some of the materials in there a uh, little bit dated in terms of you know their quality what we expect today warranty coverage class average so all in uh, i put value at four out of five stars and when you put that in with everything else we've already talked about we're at four out of five stars for the review not bad now if you like the review you just saw i invite you to see our latest one right there better yet subscribe to our youtube channel right down there either way stay tuned